Welcome to my channel Living Linux. In this video, I want to show you Linux GUI applications with Windows subsystem for Linux. And that is actually version 2, because version 2 supports GUI applications. Now I'll put this link in the description of the video so you can read all the details in your own pace. So if you haven't installed Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, you can install it like this. Um, they say you have to be administrator. And if you have WSL installed previously, then you can try WSL dash dash update. Now, I already installed it. So then by default, uh, if you have both versions installed, I think the default is WSL2, but you can start it like this. So you can see that I'm running Ubuntu 24.04. And if we do eight stop, it says that all eight cores are available, uh, but not all the memory has been assigned. Um, by default, it only assigns half of the memory. And I think they also say that by default, it also assigns only half of the processor cores or threads. So if we have a look at the task manager, so you can see that we have eight processor cores. And that we have eight gigabytes of memory. Now I have tested this earlier and somehow I have the feeling that we don't get full access to the CPU cores that, yeah, especially with the things that I tested, in this case, Pinocchio AI. Um, yeah, the performance is like really, really bad. But anyway, just to show you, um, I think by default, you are in the Windows user directory but probably it's better just to start in the Linux home directory and you can access it from the Windows side So I already downloaded Pinocchio. And yeah, it might be that you need to set the executable flag. So like this. And then you can start it. So 
So as you can see, I already installed Comfy UI and Parler TTS. I can show you Comfy UI, but since we have limited memory, then you need to find like a very small model file. And well, actually I wasn't able to find one, but just to show you that GUI applications actually work, uh, yeah, you can see that we are able to load in a workflow, but running it, um, I tried it and I added some virtual memory and the performance was like horrible. I mean, with a Snapdragon 8CX Gen 2, I think. With Stable Diffusion 1.5, it should be just a matter of minutes to generate an image, but I even let it run overnight and it was, an, was a nightmare and it, it crashed. So yeah, uh, perhaps if you have a Snapdragon X Elite with let's just say 32 gigabytes and that you can allocate 16 gigabytes for Linux, then perhaps it's better, I don't know. But at least on this old Snapdragon 8CX Gen 2, it's, it's a nightmare. Now, text-to-speech, that is not as demanding as text-to-image. But still, the performance is, in my opinion, quite bad. And I'm not really sure what, what the problem is. Uh, I, have, I have the suspicion that we don't get full access to the CPU for some reason. Okay, so here it is. So let's just take this one. And now it starts processing. And I think the result file is something like four or five seconds, something like that. And yeah, on a Snapdragon 8CX Gen 2, it, it should also be just a couple of seconds of processing time, but here you can see that it's taking considerably longer. And for the people that don't have enough patience, I'll put a timestamp, a chapter timestamp, so you can skip to the results. Um, but yeah, this performance is, is, is even worse than on my single board computer. So something isn't working as it is supposed to. And I also noticed that, um, so we do have uh, access to GUI applications, but uh, I wasn't able to get any sound. So once we have the file, then yeah, we don't get any sound output. But first we need to get to the end of the process. So now we're already at two minutes for an audio file of, let's just say five seconds. So this really is horrible performance. So I don't know
yeah if if uh, i mean like it's probably using a lot of factor instructions so perhaps we don't have good access to the uh, factor instructions through WSL um, So perhaps there is something in the virtual machine that is, is somehow throttling the performance or that it doesn't expose the CPU properly. So I've, I've seen people that say like, okay, uh, you can try to start a graphics program like GIMP and that it performs okay, but yeah, it looks like um, AI is, is not a good idea. So finally, we have the file, so we'll just download it. And then we'll play it from, let's just say, the Windows side. Um, now, where did we download it? thought we um look you or do I need to just Refresh it. Ah. Well, here it is. This is the best time of my life, Bartley, she said happily. So, GUI applications, they are working, but uh, perhaps I just picked something that, yeah, for some reason has some serious performance issues with WSL. Perhaps the applications that you want to use that the performance is as expected. So, but the good thing is, is that uh, you can use GUI applications now. Um, so, but yeah, don't be surprised that you might run into some performance issues. So in my opinion, Microsoft still needs to put in a lot of work to get a proper working Windows subsystem for Linux. So that's all for now. And I hope to see you again in my next video.